Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Marissa. So even though this is my third year doing this video, it is still the hardest video for me to make. And I think a lot of that just kind of boils down to it's such a serious, heavy subject and I'm still dealing with the aftermath of it. So I think it's hard for me to sum it all up into words sometimes. I want to keep doing this video every single year because it's been really helpful for me to talk about it and it's been helpful for me to look back on and I just I like having a video every year that kind of measures my growth. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I was going into my junior year of high school my high school cheerleading coach started dating someone and my entire junior year, we spent a lot of time with them and I got really close with both of them. I was always really close to my coach, but we got a lot closer when she started dating this guy. Um, they were at my house all the time, family dinners, they were at my birthday party, any team event, they were both always there and my mom and I always organized those. So they were just around us all the time. So the summer going into my senior year of high school, I had already known him for a full year and that was the first time he texted me and then it turned into him texting me all day every day and at first it didn't seem like it was anything weird. We would talk about school, grades, college, cheerleading, my friends, it, it wasn't anything alarming or off-putting at all. I also want you to keep in mind at this point I was 17 and he was in his 30s. Um, so for months we would just talk about anything that I, I would talk to anybody about this stuff. I was always a talkative kid. I was always an open book. There was, when I tell you there was nothing that seemed odd. I mean, there was nothing. My family trusted this guy around me. I didn't have any weird vibes or anything along those lines. So eventually during my senior year, his messages to me turned like inappropriate. And then about halfway through my senior year um, in January is when things um, got physical for the first time. So for nine years, I was in that really horrible situation. Um, it started when I was like 16, 17 and ended when I was in my 20s, three years ago, um, right about when COVID hit. So I feel like anytime I talk to people about this, a lot of people are confused because by the time I was strong enough to leave, I was already an adult. So I think a lot of people don't really understand why I stayed in it for so long. But unless you were in a situation that's similar to that, I just, it's hard to explain. Um, for nine years, I was told that if I told anyone else, they either wouldn't believe me or they would not like want nothing to do with me and that they would hate me. And that scared me enough to not say anything. And while I was being told that, I was also being manipulated um, into thinking that he was the only person that cared about me and that that was the best that I could do and that that was what I deserved. And when someone beats that into your head for months and months and months, and it starts when you're a teenager, which is still pretty vulnerable, um, you start to believe it. And I full, I mean, I fully believed it. I knew that that situation was really bad. Um, and him telling me repeatedly that no one would believe me or nobody would speak to me again if they found out. I mean, that was, that's a heavy thing to say to a kid. And that was enough for me to not say anything to anybody. So even for years, even when I was an adult, I still didn't talk about it because 
I just, I felt like my entire world was going to come crashing down and eventually I would have nobody. And I already at that point kind of felt like I had completely lost myself. So losing everybody that I cared about, um, was not something that I was trying to risk. It still gets me that everything was completely fine until suddenly it wasn't. And for a really long time, I was, anytime anything would happen, I was just like numb. It literally felt like I was outside of my body, like looking down and watching it happen. And like, I couldn't do anything about it. Like couldn't scream, couldn't stop it. Just, I just didn't feel anything like fight or flight. It did not kick in whatsoever. Like I was just a shell. I think that, like I said, anytime I talk to people about it, they don't totally understand, but abuse comes in all forms. Manipulation comes in all forms. Grooming, especially. And when I was a teenager, I had heard that term before and I knew what it was. I'd heard stories, like local stories, about people being groomed and taken advantage of by their family, their friends, their coaches, their teachers. But I did not know that that's what was happening to me. I mean, I had, I had no idea. When things turned, I think I was just so like in shock about what was happening that I was trying to convince myself that that's not what was going on. And I mean, that kept me quiet for a really long time. I just I didn't understand where I went wrong for this to be happening. And eventually when I was 21, just about, just around there, I started therapy. I was really, really depressed um, for a few years and just not in a good place and not having good thoughts or anything. And I had thought that the situation with him was really bad because he was still dating my coach during the whole thing. So I thought that was the reason that that situation was as bad as it was and it was making me feel the way that I did. And then during my first therapy session, I had talked to her about everything and she asked, she was like, and how old were you when this started? And I was like 16, 17. And she was like, and how old was he? And I said that he was in his 30s. And she was like, um, that was when she first told me that what had happened was I was groomed and taken advantage of by somebody that I trusted. And when she said that, I just remember like all these flashbacks, like all these things just started rushing into my head and like pieces were kind of starting to fit together. I mean, it still took me a few years after that, a few more years of therapy to really come to terms with what was going on. And I think that's what people are confused about. Like just because I was an adult doesn't mean that I wasn't believing the things that he was saying or that I should have known better or that the fact that he was so much older than me should have been a red flag. I mean, I completely, completely trusted this person. My family trusted this person. I was around him constantly. And suddenly, like with the flip of a switch, everything was different. And I didn't know what to do about it. And I didn't even feel like I could do anything about it. So I just kind of accepted that that's that's what was happening when i was almost 26 so right when so this is the end of february um covid was like two weeks away and i had gotten to a point the last couple of years where i was just so done i didn't care if anyone found out i didn't care if he told anyone i just want i just i wanted a reason to be able to leave whether that meant I did it on my own or enough people found out where they made me leave the situation, I really didn't care at that point.
it just got to a point where I was like, if him threatening to tell everybody that I know is the only thing he's going to hold above my head, like I would rather lose everyone if it meant like getting myself back to a better place because I was just not, I wasn't anything anymore. Like I didn't feel, I didn't want to get out of bed. I was working a job at one point and I no call, no showed um, enough times and ended up losing that job, couldn't make rent. My mom found out that I couldn't make rent. Like it was just not, it was not good. So I told him that I was completely done. And in the weeks, months, years that followed, I still got text messages, phone calls. I mean, you name it. What eventually in March... So COVID was like new, uh, March or April. What prompted me to get a restraining order was that one morning um, I woke up to messages from him and I had recently tagged a friend of mine on Instagram, who's a guy, and he saw it somehow through one of his accounts that I hadn't blocked, called that person and left a voicemail basically saying he wanted to meet up and have a conversation with him about me. That friend called me and I had to tell him the entire story start to finish because he was completely blindsided and had no idea what was going on or who that person was. So that was the first person that I told. And then um, I called my mom into my room because I was still living with her at the time and I had to rehash almost a decade's worth of trauma onto my mom. Um, in the weeks that followed that, he rode his bike past my house on more than one occasion. And at one point he actually got arrested because he was violating the temporary restraining order that I had set on him. Um, there were phone calls. He would try to message my friends on Facebook under different names comments on my social media, friend requests, um, text messages from numbers I didn't know. I mean, it was constant. It was like never ending. Eventually I did get granted a two year restraining order, which was up this past September. And um, I mean, I definitely felt better having that, but there's still, I mean, anytime I'm alone, like there's not a time that goes by that I'm not nervous that he's going to wake up one day and decide to try to come back into my life. We live in the same city, so I sometimes feel like it's just a matter of time. I mean, I, I live on my own now, and anytime I come to my apartment and it's empty or I'm walking to my car in the dark or something, I always try to make sure I have someone on the phone because I'm just... I was scared of everything to begin with, but it's a completely different um, level when you know there's somebody out there who has something against you. Um, so I don't know how many years it'll take for that element of it to go away, but that's definitely something that I, it still crosses my mind all the time. I would say in the last year, I, I'll talk to anybody about the situation. I'll answer any questions that anybody ever has about it. I'm trying to get better at advocating for myself. I know that there are people who don't understand what happened to me. They don't understand why I didn't leave. They don't understand why I didn't say anything or why I stayed so long or, or what, whatever. Um, and in my last therapy session, we had talked about it and she said, Everybody wants to think that they would handle a situation better than you have. So I just try to remind myself that like nobody truly understands unless they went through something similar. I mean, people get abused all the time by anybody. And I, I just don't think that it's fair to assume that it would have been easy for me to leave. I mean, just because I was an adult it's not like I woke up one day and a light bulb went off and years of manipulation just suddenly disappeared and I realized what was going on because like that's not the case. That's not realistic. Back in February, 
one of my main concerns the last three years has been what would happen if I saw him. In February, I went out with some people that I know and he ended up being there with his wife, who was my coach. Um, and when I got there, I happened to be looking around and I saw him see me. Half an hour later, I was walking around um, the place that we were at and ended up a few feet away from him and looked over and he was just staring directly into my eyes. I always thought that if I saw him, I would want to throw up. I'd be anxious. I'd be crying. But in that moment, all the only emotion that I felt was just like anger. So many years of just built up. There's so much I want to say and wish I could say and I have said and I would like to say again um especially after everything he's put me through in the last three years of just like constantly being scared and waiting for something to happen um after he was staring at me we left a little while later ended up at a restaurant and about 30 minutes in they both walk into the same restaurant and at that point, I just start talking. I'm saying anything that's on my mind. I'm not screaming. I'm not causing a scene. But I'm being loud enough for everybody that I'm with and they hear me. Um, and honestly, it felt like a thousand pounds was lifted off my shoulders when I left that restaurant. Because I had waited for three years and didn't know what would happen if I were to see him somewhere. And I finally did and it was on my terms. And I got to say some things and get them off of my chest. And that made me feel better than I ever thought that it would. And I just feel like it really showed that I'm in control now. And he has no no grasp over me anymore. Um, I'm no longer that person who turned into everything he wanted me to be. Um, his words, like they don't hold any value to me anymore. And I just feel like I walked out of that feeling stronger because of it. And now I know if I ever see him again, which I hope that I don't, I know how I'll react. And I just felt like it was really important for me to show that I'm not afraid of him. Um, also, a few months ago, I went back to my high school for, I think I've only been back there like maybe two times since I graduated. And a friend of mine coaches there now. So I went there and saw her and they were practicing in the gym that I spent four years of my life um, training in and after I was done seeing my friend I walked around the school just because it had been so long since I'd been in there and oh, like before I knew it I was just like bawling walking around and I think that it just like it really started to hit me that that was the last place that I was where I felt whole and where I felt things were easy. And like the only worry that I used to have in high school was like passing a test. And like my entire life was ahead of me and I had all the friends I wanted. I was doing great in cheerleading and I had all these like really great things to look forward to and now I feel like every memory I have from high school is just like tainted by the way that it ended which was in this and I just think that walking around and like seeing my locker and my classes and the gyms that I used to cheer in like I my personality in high school, it, it was cheering. Like, that's all that I was. It was my absolute favorite thing to do. 
it was my escape. It was what I, what got me going, what got me up in the morning. And for that sport to also bring like the worst thing that I've ever gone through has been really hard. Thinking about who I used to be before he came along and like my entire life changed. Um, just ended up being like a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be like emotional over it at all. But, um, I just, it was just a lot, a lot like hitting me at one time. Um, because I used to be, I was just happy. Like I was making jokes and I had so many friends and all these really good memories and there were people that like look up to me and um it's just crazy to think like how fast um that person like washed away and eventually I turned into someone who was just like unhappy pretty much all the time and anytime I was around other people, I would muster up every ounce of energy that I had to pretend to be who I used to be so that they wouldn't know anything was wrong with me. And I just think that walking around and getting those like vivid memories back of um, what I was before he came along and like destroyed everything just ended up being a lot to take in I don't I mean if anyone's been in like a similar situation I don't know that I would recommend going back to somewhere where like trauma started for you I don't even know what possessed me to do that and I talked to my therapist about it and I think I um probably needed that subconsciously for some reason and it didn't necessarily make me feel any better when I left I think it was just part of me kind of coming to terms with that was who I was and she went away for a really long time and like this is who I am now and I've worked really really hard to get my life back um I I can't recommend therapy enough um if you or someone you know has been through anything similar at all whether you've told people about it or or whether nobody knows um therapy is the only reason that I even knew what was happening I have no idea where I would be right now or if I'd even be here at all had it not been for therapy and being able to just really process on like a healthy level what was happening to me. I, I want to make sure that I make this video every year so that I can look back and see the growth. I'm so much happier than I ever used to be. I don't cry all day, every day. I want to go to work. I want to get out of bed. I want to travel. I want to go do things. I spent nine years wasting my life and I have no intent on wasting any more time. I'm thankful that what he told me for almost a decade wasn't true. I didn't lose anyone after I told them about everything. If anything, it's just made my bond stronger with people. Um, I'm thankful to still be going to therapy and working on healing from all of this, like a session at a time. I'm thankful to be living on my own now and really understanding what it means to be independent and valuing my time by myself because before I was completely reliant on being around other people because if I was alone it just sent me into like a really dark place and now I actually value my time on my own. Um, 
I'm thankful that I'm making good steps forward as far as relationships and trusting people and like my love life goes. Um, that was really, the thought of that was very touch and go for a long time. I'm just, I'm thankful to be here and actually be present in everyone's life, including my own, and to not be tied down to someone who wants every second, every minute, every hour of every day. And I just, if watching this video helps anybody, I'll feel like I'll have done my job. I feel like it's really important to talk about. Unfortunately, things like this happen a lot more often than people could probably realize. And it's taken me a long time to see myself as someone who didn't do anything wrong. Like I didn't go into this purposefully. Um, there was a point when I was in high school, my senior year, where my coach saw messages that her boyfriend was sending me and she actually blamed me for them and said that she didn't understand why I would go for someone that she was dating. And I just remember feeling like complete scum, like the lowest point. And eventually she forgave me. Um, and I remember feeling really, really happy. And looking back on that, I'm so disgusted that someone whose job it is to um, keep children safe saw something right in front of her face and chose to do nothing about it. I'm a coach now and I cannot imagine my kid's safety not being my highest priority. So for years, I mean, I was still valuing her opinion and looking up to her and wishing that she would take me back in or whatever. And now I'm just, the thought of that is so disgusting to me because she had such an opportunity to save me and didn't. And instead, um, she blamed me for what her grown adult boyfriend was doing and just kept moving on with her life like it was, like it was nothing. And I can't begin to understand what kind of person especially a person who works with kids, would ever do that. We were really, really close for a long time. And now I see that a lot of the reason we were really close is because he purposefully did things and invited me and did all of these things because he knew that if I started to trust him, he could take advantage of that situation. So I'm not even sure how much of my relationship with her was real, but I just look back on it and it makes me sick. And a couple of years ago, I was interviewing for a coaching job and someone asked, they asked me who inspired me to be a coach. And I lied. Um, when she was coaching me is when I realized that I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. And just admitting that, like, sends this pit into my stomach because it's so disturbing that I looked up to someone who completely failed me, like in every aspect of the word. Um, she just would not see what was right in front of her face. And it hurts me that my love for this sport grew so much with someone who had such a negative impact on like my mental well-being and my safety.
I want to make sure I make this video every year and I talk about the things that I'm thankful for and the growth that I've made because really I'm a completely different person than I was three years ago and I am thankful every day for that now that I've talked for a long time. I want to thank anyone who has stayed this long in the video and has watched this, who's watched any of the other ones, anyone who's come forward and told me that they've been through th something similar, anyone who's supported me the last three years, I'm like eternally grateful for everybody in my life and even more grateful that I see a light at the end of all of this and I'm stronger I'm stronger now than I ever used to be. So that is the end of the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on. Bye.